Hi guys, welcome back to Johnny's Garage. Subscribe to my channel and thumbs up. Please help me to share the history and the passion for car and for engines. Today I would like to talk to you again about the Fiat X19. Yes, this is the second episode about this very particular and fascinating car. The Fiat X19 is a two-seater mid-engine sports car designed by Bertone and manufactured by Fiat from 1972 till 1982 and subsequently by Gruppo Bertone from 1982 till 1989. With a transverse engine and gearbox in a mid-mounted rear-wheel drive configuration, the X19 was noted for its balanced handling, retractable headlights, lightweight removable air top which could be stowed under the bonnet, front and rear storage compartment, and for being the first Fiat to have been designed from its conception to meet US safety regulation. It's really interesting, guys, to know that the car was quite compact. Yes, it was really small, about 3,83 m long, so short base and lightweight. About the history and development, the X19 was developed from 1969 Autobianchi A112 runabout concept with styling by Bertone under chief designer Marcello Gandini. Even though the runabout was named for the Autobianchi a112, it was powered by a version of brand new Fiat 128 SOHC single overhead camshift engine. The runabout featured a distinctive wedge shape and took many styling cues from contemporary powerboat design. Though the more extreme features of the runabout, such as the C pillar mounted headlights, and the small wind deflector windscreen were lost for the production car. Many aesthetic features of the Autobianchi runabout are readily identifiable on the X19. The long flat bonnet with central indentation, the large front overhang, the wedge shape with prominent C pillar rollover hoop, and the car length intended waterline all made the successful transition to the X19, giving it a highly distinctive appearance. Design around the Fiat single overhead camshaft engine and transmission from the four front wheel drive Fiat 128, sorry guys, the X19 relocated the transverse drain train and suspension assembly from the front of the 128 to the rear of the passenger cabin directly in front of the rear axle, giving a mid-engine layout, so the perfect balance for driving. The engine was designed by Aurelio Lampredi, famed Ferrari engine designer before he went to work for Fiat, the parent company at the time. The fuel tank and spare wheel were located ahead of the engine, behind the driver and passenger seats respectively optimizing the proportion of the car's weight within its wheelbase for more balanced handling and enabling cargo areas front and rear. Once developed for production, the two-seater featured a sharp edge styling with a wedge shaped retractable headlights and integrated spoiler and a removable hard top roof panel target top. So it was quite a smart car. The removable hardtop could be stored in the front boot. A second luggage compartment was provided at the rear of the car, accessible through a conventional boot lid. Unlike Fiat marketing's nomenclature, at the time which used a numerical system, yes, 127, 128, 124, 131, denoting relative position in the model range, the X1-9 retained its prototype code as its marketing name. Fiat's prototype coding used X0 for engines, X1 for passenger vehicle, and X2 for commercial vehicles. The X19 was thus the ninth passenger car developed using this nomenclature. 
Production and Modern Evolution Guide. Originally slated to the bat at the November 1972 Touring Motor Show, the X19 launch was delayed until after the show to avoid upstaging the new Fiat 12C City car. The Fiat 12C City car was the replacement for the most famous 500 Fiat City car. Press test drives were held at the end of November 1972 on the Sicilian Madonie Road, home to the Targa Floria Road Race. The car was intended to replace the 850 Spider, another Bertone design, not the larger and pricer 124 Spider Sport. Wood's production continued for much, much of the X19's life. The car's monocoque body was produced by Bertone factory in Gugliasco, Turin, and then transported to the Fiat Lingotto's factory for the final assembly. As mentioned before, the X19 types 128 AS 1.3 liter engine, about 79 cubic inches, single overhead coming line four, was derived from the Fiat 128, specifically from the 128 cube 1.3. Changes including a new cast aluminium oil sump, complementing the aluminium cylinder head with a twin coke Weber 32 diameter carburetor and 8.9 ratio to 1 compression ratio. The engine produces 75 DIN rated metric horsepower at 6000 RPM and 97 DIN rated Newton meters, 72 lead feet lib for feet at, of tour at 3400 rpm the all synchronized four speed transmission was also scattered <coughs> over from the 128 thought with a teller four to gear ratio to exploit the sports car's better aerodynamics as a consequence the x19 had the top speed over 117 70 kilometers per hour, 100 zero C miles per hour, 10 kilometers per hour higher than the similar engines, 128 cube car. As standard, the X1 name came with 4.5 per 13 inch stamped steel wheels with fitted 145 HR 13 inches tires while cast alloys wheels were an extra cost option. Suspension was fully independent with McPherson struts in front and rear. The split circuit brake system used equally sized 227 mm in solid disc all around. Steering was rack and pinion. The interior upholstered in leatherette featured two bucket seats with integrated headrest and a four-spoke steering wheel, resembling the one fitted to the Lamborghini Marzal. The engine cover and the rear trunk could be opened with lockable interior located on the driver's, si driver's side door jamp. The original 1.3-liter four-speed X19 can be distinguished from the later 1.5-liter and five-speed model by its wraparound steel split bumpers with rubber blocks and the shallower engine compartment lid. Fiat began marketing a right-hand drive variant in 1966. Prior to this, Rollborn Racing had been converted in left-hand drive X19 to right-hand drive config configuration for sale in the UK market. No one of these early conversions are believed to remain in existence. In 1982, shortly after the introduction of the 1500 model, complete production was assumed by Bertone, with the model subsequently based as Bertone X19. Bertone models future revised footwell redesign to enhance leg rooms and slitting, sitting comfort for persons taller than the original design target. The last production models were named Grand Finale and sold 
over the 1989 and 1990 period. They were a dealer modification of the special edition, commonly abbreviated to SE special edition, 1988-1989, with the adding of a real spoiler and grand finale bait. United States uh, reported numbers vary by sort, about two thirds of the approximately 100, 160,000 pieces produced were sold in the US. Three generations of X19 were sold in the US. 1974 cars, 1975, 1978 cars, and 1979, 1989 cars. The 1974 UX example aligned closely with the worldwide models, including small but US specific bumpers, 63 horsepower for the 1.3 engine, and four speed transmission. The 1975 and 1978 US cars were unique to the US market with the ladder style impact absorbing bumpers front and rear to meet the US evaporative and exhaust emission standard. X19 were fitted with exhaust gas recirculation valves, air pumps, and activated car coil system. These cars were rated at 61 horsepower. In 1979, US cars received an increase in displacement to 1.5 liter and five speed transmission with the max power up to 67 horsepower, about 50 kilowatts. In 1979, US car retained the previous emission control, model years 1980 and 1981, saw a transition from carburation to Bosch L G-tronic fuel injection, with the changeover coming in the 1918 for cars sold in California and gradual changeover for federal cars from late 1980 to 1981 model year. The combination of fuel injection, a catalytic converter, and unleaded gasoline allowed this car to meet California and later federal emission standard. Fuel injected cars were rated at 65 horsepower. In 1979, US X19 also received both exterior and interior revision, including integrated bumpers front and rear, as well as new front grills and air dams. The instrument panel and dash redesign moved to the heating and ventilation control from center console up to the main dash, relocated the radio to the central dash area, moved the fuse panel from the area above the drivers left knee to the area above the passenger's foot where, where the glove box was and moved the glove box at to atop the dash. During 1982, Fiat ended its produce, its presence in the US. Fiat turned over marketing and support of the X19 to international automobile importers, headed by Malcolm Breitling, and turned over full production duties to Bertone. In 1983, the Orphaned X19 was sold as Bertone X19, and Bertone continued to update X19, providing improved rust protection, revised seating to accommodate taller drivers, and a modernized electrical system for 1984 model. US sales of the X19 fell in the final few years, and in 1987 was the last year that the international automobile imported the X19 to the US. From mid-1987 to the end of production 1989, Bertone were imported to the US by MI Key Automotive Inc. in North Hollywood, California, owned by Miro Keyford, who at the time was the number one Bertone dealer in the US and one of the very few that sold exclusively X19. The last four X19 were imported to the US in 1990. They were 1989 model year cars produced in December 1989. Guys, 
I'd like to stop here this video about the Fiat X09 and uh, give you the appointment for the next one video about this car, about this car, talking about the concept car and prototypes. Bye guys, subscribe to my channel and thumbs up. Thank you for watching.